and here I present solution to day 29th of December lead code challenge and I hope all of you guys are following along. The question is a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. It is one of the hot topics of Google and the concept that we will use to solve this question would be sorting and heaps together. Let's try and understand the question and then we will move on to the presentation where I'll explain it in detail along with the test case iteration. The question says you have a single threaded CPU and these are the rules by which this CPU should abide. So I'll be talking about these rules in the PPT. So let's not get into the details over here. However, just remember that once a task is started, the CPU will process the entire task without stopping. So you can't stop the CPU from performing any of the tasks in between the execution. Unless it is fully done, the CPU is not yet available to pick more tasks. Also, the CPU can finish a task then start a new one instantly. So as soon as the CPU gets free, it can pick up another task from the available task and can perform them instantaneously. What do we need to do? We need to identify the order in which the CPU shall be executing these tasks. So you need to return that order. The question says we only have single threaded CPU. So there is no parallel processing that can happen. This is another important point to remember. Now let's quickly move on to the presentation and once we will go through the solution you yourself would feel that this question is not that hard although it looks very hard it is not that hard. So let's quickly hop on to the PPT. Now let's get back to the problem. The question says you are given task in the form of an array and each task has two attributes associated with it. The first one is the time when this task is available to be consumed. We call it, we call it NQ time or available time. The other attribute is processing time. How much time will this task take to be executed by the CPU? For example, this task will be available at the first instant and will take two units of time. This task will be available at second instant and will take four units of time. This task will be available at third instant and will take two units of time. This one will be available at fourth instant and will take one unit of time. There was a very important property specified in the question. Let's go through that property. If the CPU is idle and there are tasks available, then the CPU will choose the one that has the smallest processing time. What does this mean? So let's consider a hypothetical scenario where the CPU has an option to choose either this task or this task since both of them are available at the first instant itself. Which task is CPU gonna pick up? It will pick the one that has lower processing time, this one. So this will be executed first over this. This is the meaning of the first statement. Now let's move ahead. The second statement says if multiple tasks have the same shortest processing time, then in that case it will choose the one that has the smallest index. For example, over here, let's take the second case. Let's hypothetically assume that there are two tasks available. The first one is available at the first instant. It has four unit of processing time. The second one also is available at the first instant and again it has four unit of processing time. As you can clearly see that both these tasks have the same processing time. Then CPU will pick up which one out of these two. It will select the one that has the lower index. So this one will be selected because it is at the lower index and this one will be taken care later on. From this analysis, what do we observe? What all we can extract from it? Let's try and understand. Index is, becomes a very important property because of the second constraint and along with these two things available time and processing time index should be stored because then only CPU will be able to make decision in case of collision which task to pick. Another important attribute to analyze while reading the question while comprehending it up is that the tasks are not given to you in a sorted fashion on the basis of available time. These are randomly given. And from the question, it appears that they are given on the basis of sorted order on the property of available time or NQ time. However, this is a myth. It's not. The question upfront doesn't state it, but you should be able to comprehend it appropriately by yourself. So in the first go, what we are going to do, we will sort the entire array of tasks given to you on the basis of available time. And since we are sorting the entire array up, we have to keep track of the index as well so as to avoid collisions later on. Therefore, I have updated the input such that 
my each task has three attributes in it the first one is the index at which it is put present in the original array the second one is the available time or nq time the third one is the processing time now what i'm going to do i'm going to sort this array up on the basis of available time and after the sorting operation is done my array would look like something like this although it's the same as given in the original question but that's the, by coincidence now let's devise the algorithm on the basis of which cpu is going to pick up tasks from our tasks array and for this let's hypothetically assume that this is the timeline that is given to us starting from the 0th index that represents the 0th time instant going up till the 10th time instant and let's start the operation what we are going to do we'll also store the available tasks that are there up till the timeline the current time that we have witnessed so far and we'll be storing those available tasks in the form of a min heap so that when we are pulling out elements from this min heap the one that has least processing time will be pulled out first and in case of collision the one that has lower index value will be pulled out first so let's keep these two points in our head and let's start building our timeline the current time interval that we have happens to be zero so at zero do we have any task available no we don't have any task available so let's proceed ahead at let's move to the next time interval which is one at one do we have any task available yes we have one task available so we will be making an insertion of this element into our min heap so this elements get added into the min heap 0 1 2 2 and what do we see we see that at the first instant we have one task available so what we are going to do we'll pull out that task from the min heap and we'll execute that task so this gets pulled out and since there was only one task available and we are going to execute this task up how much time will it take to be executed it will take two units of time so the first task to be executed is this one and it is going to take two units of time so our cpu will be consumed up till the third time instant and what we are going to do parallelly while cpu is executing that task we will check for those tasks that are available so far made available so far so the next available time for the task happens to be 2 so this is available and this is less than 3 2 is less than 3 that means this task the first task the first index task is available to us for execution so we will make an insertion of this task into our min heap the next task that we have is 2 3 2 and this is available at the third time instant since this is also this value is also less than equal to 3 we, this task will be added into our min heap so this gets added into our min heap let's proceed ahead the next task that we have is 3 4 1 1 and this task will be available at the fourth time interval as a result of which this task won't be part of our available tasks as a result of which this task won't be added onto the min heap now at the third time instant again cpu has got idle because it has executed the first task and again it will ask for the next task to be executed which one will be pulled out from the min heap the one that has lower processing time which one has the lower processing time this one has the lower processing time which is t2 so t2 will be executed afterwards and it will take two units of time so 3 plus 2 gives you 5 now during this time phase between 3 till 5 t2 will be executed so this task is done this task is done now our current time has been updated to 5 units because we are standing at the fifth time interval and we will again see what our all task has been made available so far so if you carefully see that this task t3 task has been made available since it has been made available we are going to make an insertion for this task into the min heap so 3 4 1 gets added into the min heap and now again cpu has gone idle at the fifth time interval it will again ask min heap do you have any pending task the answer is yes which one will be returned the one that has lower processing time so out of these two tasks 
the the one that has lower processing time will be pulled out so this is gone that means t3 task will be executed and the execution time for this particular task happens to be one unit as a result of which between fifth time interval till sixth one t3 will be executed awesome now our current time has been updated to 6 do we have any more task pending in the ta task array that are not yet inserted no we don't have anything pending and we will simply ask the min heap do you have anything pending in in the uh, min heap array yes one task is pending and it will be pulled out so the last task to be executed happens to be t1 and it will be executed up till four units of time as a result of which we can say that t1 will span over starting from sixth time interval till 10th now we have successfully completed all the task the min heap has gone empty and we will abort the process so what is the execution order that we have derived out of this the first task to be executed is t0 the second one is t2 the third one is t3 and the fourth one is t1 which is in sync with our expectation now let's quickly walk through the coding section and i'll exactly follow the same steps as i have just talked pointer is for iterating over my input array my index pointer is for building my result array and here i have created my result array let's start the iteration and this is the core algorithm that i have written while my i is less than the total available length of task i have not added or seen all the tasks given in my input array what do i do i check whether my current time happens to be greater than or equal to my available time for my ith task if it is greater than or equal to that means the current task is available for utilization i add that task into my min heap and sim simply increment my ith pointer i less than task dot length is a safety check moving ahead i check whether my heap is empty or not if it is empty i simply update my current time to the available time for the ith task so this is for the initiation process let's proceed ahead if my min heap is not empty that means it has some elements then what i'm going to do i'm going to pull out elements from my min heap and this is the task that i have selected for execution i'll update its index uh the index that was stored at the zeroth index and add it to my result array and i simply update my index pointer for storing the result array uh, along with this i'll also update my current time to the processing time for this particular task so current time happens to be equal to current time plus current task at the second index which basically represents the processing time and once i am out of the loop i again check if i still have any task to be executed in my min heap so that is another uh, safety check that i have written i simply extract that task and update it, add it to my result array in the end we simply return the result let's try and submit this up so this is in sync with what i told in the presentation exactly is the same steps accepted with this we have successfully submitted today's solution i hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed it and if you are looking for more problems on heaps a uh, concept then sd preparation sheet is there for you comes to rescue so go and check out this link this is specified in the description section and select the heaps or priority queue section you will find enough questions to practice wherever you will be stuck you will have the video solution over there itself so looking forward to seeing your feedback on these sheets and i will see you tomorrow with another fresh question till then goodbye